well. Let's see if we can get her going here. See if I can start this thing. Y'all let me know when it's going. Are we going? Yeah. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Tuesday night, it's your pal John Reap here. And you know what that means. We got an all new Carolina Reaper show. Can't wait to get it started. Okay, here we go. All right, we got 21 seconds. I'll see you soon, Denver, Richmond, Myrtle Beach. Today's newspaper got a great show. Hit the share button. We only got 12 seconds. You know what I mean? Sebastian is here. McConaughey, our basketball aficionado. Let's get her going in a three, a two, a one, and a go. Live from Hickory, it's Tuesday night, April the 2nd, and you're about to watch an all new Carolina Reaper show. And we are totally live tonight. It is actually April the 2nd. Here's how you know, I got today's newspaper and I circled and highlighted, well, I just highlighted the date. That is proof of live right there. So anything can happen. Go ahead and hit the share button, why don't you? Shout out to Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? How about a used vehicle? Why don't you go down to Hendrick Honda in Hickory and let the good people down there hook you up with a hamburger, hot dog, and a Honda? <sighs> you know what I mean? All righty. We've got a lot to talk about. I say we get to it right about now. What say you, Mr. Sebastian? Let's do it. Let's do it, Alan Jackson. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. What up, peeps? Welcome to an all new Carolina Reaper show. What is that? Well, it's like a PM magazine from the Carolinas addicted to the crack corn, because we get crazy, you know what I mean? In today's episode, it's like a couple of determined DJs defeating a bunch of delusional Duke Blue Devils. How about that wolf pack, baby? Final four, here we come. We're gonna talk about it. That and the new Roadhouse movie and Moulin Rouge the musical, yes. Plus, we're gonna laugh at some idiotic TikToks and I got money to give away. I got three unopened residual checks right here. So get ready to call in later because it's a live show for your chance to win my money. Because yes, I'm live right now. Facebook, YouTube, X, Twitch, Anything could happen. I got Sebastian right here checking the comments. Um, Can you comments. see people? Are they talking to me yet? They're talking. Yes, they're talking to you. Sebastian, how about yeah. this? The first person to throw a number up from one to three. Pick a number between one and three. Put it up. Sebastian, when you see a number, call out the person's name. That's how you know we're live, people. You know what I mean? Facebook, YouTube, X, anything can happen. So leave me a comment. Talk to me in real time. I want to be interactive with you. Answer me this, people at home. Have you, have you seen the new Roadhouse movie? I've watched it. I have thoughts. I want to know what your thoughts are. Three, three. Dustin Richardson, number three on Facebook. Shout out Dustin Richardson, put up number three. Raise hell, praise Dale. Shout out to you. That's how you know we're live. How did I know he would have said that, right? Uh, all right, let me go to Sean. Uh, Sebastian McConaughey. Yeah. Um, played a little b-ball for the Charlotte Hornets. I want to say during the Kelly Trapuca years, you know a thing or two about basketball. You're six feet, seven inches tall, of twisted steel and sex appeal. Uh, but before we get to b-ball, I want to ask you, did you see the new Roadhouse movie? I have not seen it. You haven't seen, seen it yet. I've seen it advertised. Now, you, uh, you've seen the old one. Yes. What are your thoughts on the original? The Patrick Swayze one. Who yeah. is the bouncer. Yeah. He's a bouncer. I bought it then, but the older I got, I didn't buy it. Oh, I see. Because he's what, 5'4"? Oh, yeah. Oh, when you are a kid. You thought, yeah. You were younger. He looked bigger. Yeah, it's believable. Yeah. Well, he looked bigger, and, and also, 
you know, the, um, you have this illusion of, I don't know, this fantasy maybe that uh, things like that happened in the real world. Yeah. And really, you know, that wouldn't happen, those things the way they did. Okay, the first one I'll say, over the top, right? Campy. It was, had funny moments. You, you know, Sam Elliott was great. Um, Patrick Swayze was great. I like some of the fight scenes. I, I like it because, uh, you know, Roadhouse, the first one, the fights take place in Double Deuce. That was the name of the bar that yeah. they, he was a bodyguard of, or right. a bouncer of. And he had to train these younger bouncers how to do it, right? And then that first big fight, there, there's always a redneck that picks up a pool cue and starts doing kata, like he knows karate all of a sudden with this pool stick or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. So I, I like that kind of stuff. But I, I did see the new one, and people are kind of dogging it. I think there's two, two schools going on right now. Some people go, I hated it. It wasn't as good as the first one. And then some people go like, it wasn't that bad. I thought it was pretty good. I am in the pretty good side. Because the original, I will say the original of anything is usually the best one. You know what I mean? And they do a remake. It's never going to be exactly as good. I don't know any remake. And Alan, you can weigh in here. Do you mm. know of any remake of any original film that is as good or better than the original? Uh, um, I'm, I'm not talking sequels. Right, no, I got you. Remakes. Oh, yeah. You Remakes. know what I mean? Not a sequel. Not a sequel. Sequel's different. Number yeah. two, sequel's never going to be as good as one, because, well, not usually. That, that's a different argument. I'll definitely have to think about that. I can't yeah. come up with one yet. But Y'all let me know at home yeah. if you think there's a remake that's as good as the original. Probably some Western movie that was original that you don't even think about as original, but was remade. You know what was remade a lot is uh, that A Star is Born thing. With yep, the, yep, yep. I didn't know that was a remake. It's, that one's been done like five or six times, <laughs> like since the 20s or something. And uh, Spider-Man, is that a sequel or is that a remake? Oh, a lot of remakes with spider -Man. Yep, you're right. In the Marvel world. Yeah. A lot, Batman. A lot yeah. of remakes. Ooh, that begs the question. What's the best Batman? Michael Keaton? Is it Christian Bale? Is it Ben Affleck? Is it, I don't, Alan, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, you might have a good opinion about who's the best Batman. You want to keep the show at an hour, right? Yeah. Uh, All right. So that's just, I'm just letting you know, this right. may go down a big rabbit hole. I hear you. I've got a, I've got a lot to, okay. I, could, I could dump on this. So you see where I'm going though, is yeah. like, is a remake ever better than the original? And it could be, yes. So just know that. <laughs> well, I don't think it's uh, Adam West. You know, huh. in my opinion, okay, here's all the bat. Let's just, just do it real quick. Here's all your Batman. All right. Adam West, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Christian Bale. Now, they didn't put Ben Affleck in there who played Batman. That's true. But And we actually have a new one. The uh, That kid. What's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Patterson. Um, yeah, the guy, the the vampire team, team vampire dude. Oh yeah. gosh, he's insignificant. Yeah. The best. He's no, not he's the best. Good, he's good. He's, he, good. he's good, but he does, I don't think he's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate George Clooney and Val Kilmer, who yeah. I love. I'm yeah. going to go ahead and eliminate Adam West. Oh wow! Even with the mascara on the on the costume, look, they drew his they drew his eyebrows oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at, yeah. Well, Keaton did it first. Keaton's got eyebrows. Yeah. 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 So. I'm going to go, it's between Keaton and Bale. You're saying Keaton or Bale? Yeah, I'm saying Keaton or Bale for me. Um, I mean, I'm kind of with you there. I think it's between the two. I, I got to, look, Keaton's awesome. I think he's great, but I, I do think Christian Bale might be a better, Christian, I, a better overall Batman. I think you're right because he had the body to match it. Yeah. Whereas Keaton, a, a, a more likable Batman, yes, but not a, a believable Batman I as much. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we're done with Batman. <laughs> now, Roadhouse. That went a lot quicker than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for the heads up. Because <laughs> I could have spun off as well. Now, because Patrick Swayze is the original bouncer in the original Roadhouse, there is no way. Because number one, Patrick Swayze is deceased, so he'll always have this 
yeah. thing about he's the best of all time in anything. Like if they do Dirty Dancing, no matter who they pick, it's not going to be as good. Any Patrick Swayze film, if they remade Ghost, will not Ooh. be as good as the original. There's no way, yeah. You know? So we'll just stick to that. That's the reason why this is not as, as good as the original. Now, what I did like about it was some of the changes they made. Um, the Roadhouse is now called The Roadhouse and not The Double Deuce. And they have a little joke about that in there. Uh, the, the bar itself, The Roadhouse, is awesome looking. It, it takes place in the Keys, Florida Keys. And it's just on this body of water, like out in the middle of nowhere yeah. in the Keys somewhere. Uh, the fight scenes were amazing. The action was amazing. Uh, and it was as campy as the first one. It has some goofy funny dialogue um and then you got conor mcgregor yeah i've seen the conor mcgregor clips and i am still on the fence i can't tell i, I think i'm going to go ahead and say he just played a 100 percent version of himself yeah and wasn't acting uh because it's his acting was stood out from everyone else's when that dude walked on the scene you're like it's kind of like Terminator, like when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger showed up for the first time, you're like, ooh, this got real. And it was a little bit of that going on mm -hmm. in this film. So I would say this overall, I liked it, didn't love it, wasn't disappointed because I didn't hold the first one in that big a high regard. If you remember when the first one came out, it got panned. People made fun of this. It was, it, it was, the critics didn't like it, but they don't like a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So just... That's my opinion, but I can't wait to hear what you say, Sebastian. Are you, do you have any plans to see this one? I'll have to watch it now Yeah. if I'm desperate. Yeah. It's on Amazon Prime. I'll give you my account number. Oh, I've got, I'm a primer. Oh, yeah, you're a primer. I'm a primer. Mark watched it on my account. Of course. I forgot he did. he did. Now, Alan Jackson, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. If I have Amazon Prime, yes. did this movie, was it free? Um, like. I think so okay because i let i didn't let mark watched it and so i went to watch this me thinking for the first time and it said would you like to resume watching <laughs> i'm like resume <laughs> who so now who's got my account mark goes oh no i watched it i was like oh okay i'm thinking well man is that is it free with amazon or? <laughs> so does mark owe me 10 bucks i am uh, verifying hold on okay <laughs> i want to know if mark owes me 10 bucks no, i think it's important i think we need to know this thank so, you yeah all right so leave in the comments section whether or not you liked the new Roadhouse and whether or not you think Mark owes me 10 bucks. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm verifying that it, it was free with Prime membership. Okay. So it was so of, bad that Mark it was does free. Not owe you anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Why was it? Why was it not in theaters? Do you think a movie of this stature would come out in theaters? I, it was only on Amazon, huh? I think Amazon paid a lot of money to have it and use it as a way to get more people to sign up for Amazon Prime. Yeah. I was ready to dog it because when I saw the trailer, I thought, oh, it's going to be woke. <laughs> it does have some woke moments to it. And I was like, oh, I got to start writing jokes about calling it Woke House. Woke House, yeah. You know? But it wasn't, as, it wasn't so woke that it bothered me. You know, I think moving forward, guys my age are just going to have to learn this is what is going to be in most movies moving forward sadly a, a little tinge of the wokeness here and there but you know as long as it doesn't it, as long as long as it's not so obvious that it takes me out of the film you don't if i'm watching something and i don't know oh well that's funny. you don't want to wake it up you don't you don't be woken up too yeah fast. let me yeah. you want to you want to come I just hit the snooze you'll be woken button. yeah slowly <laughs> yeah right you don't be interrupted in the morning woke right i don't want to be shaken like violently yeah. get it yeah. up you, you know? don't want the water to hit you in the face. Right. Yeah. I want someone to just walk and go, John, this is a low man. Yeah. Just, yes. You can take a, take a nap. It's okay. I'll wake you up when it's over. You went to NC State. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah, I did go to state. ACC champions. Possibly NCAA champions. We're going to find out. Let's get to some idiotic TikToks. What I like oh. to do here. You know I'm a big fan of people falling down. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, this is one way Jody and I communicate with each other when I'm on the road. We just send a TikTok to each other or Instagram reel or Facebook reel. And uh, we laugh at them. 
So I thought I would share mine with you, what made me laugh in this segment of idiotic TikToks. Okay. Oh. And I, I do believe they're better with sound. Yes. <laughs> so uh, looks like Dion Jackson has the first one pulled up. Let's just watch this drunk guy climbing stairs. Uh, it looks like on a lakeside somewhere, right? And I don't know the backstory on these. You know, when you're scrolling on TikTok, it's a video plays. Yeah. I don't really go in there, and, unless it's something that's really got my attention, go in there and read the comments or f read the description or, you know, if it's part two of some other thing or if it's fake or if it's whatever. I just laugh at it for what it is and move on. <coughs> so nine times out of ten. I don't know the context of any of this. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Here's the first one. <laughs> That's at a lake. This is crazy. So the guy behind him trips first. Steps on a, a, a step that's not nailed down good enough. Causing the other guy, who has a drink in his hand, to turn it back. And then he trips. And slides face first. <laughs> That's a redneck water slide. <laughs> yes, it is. You don't need water in a redneck water slide. You no. just need an incline and some dirt and sand. Yeah. That's great. And some rickety steps. Do you think this was an American thing? Yeah, I think that happened in America. Now, I love this one. Um, now, I want to ask you your opinion on this, uh, <laughs> Sean. Did this guy do it on purpose to be on TV? Yeah. Or is this a real fall? Let's watch it again. Let's watch this again. Let's see it with the sound. Here we go. We got a guy, he's a picture, he's on the mound. Oh, no, no. That was not on purpose. <laughs> that was not on purpose? No, look at what he catches his foot on. <laughs> I think it, I think, it, oh, yeah, I think see it was it? real. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, his face planted. His face a guy that old will not commit to a fall no, like that. No, for not for a strike. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. He, what game was this? Oh, man. Yeah, he hit hard. I, see, now, I wish it would show the aftermath of some of these. Yeah. Like, I'd like to go back in and go, is this guy alive? Did he get stitches? Is he hurt? Did they stop the game? Well, I'm, what a great advertisement for Chick-fil-A. Chick <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, yeah, we'll make you fall down the steps to get to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Our prices are dropping. Yeah. <laughs> You can take a dip when you dip our nuggets in our new sauce. <laughs> that guy's oh, got a yeah. plate of Chick-fil-A in his hand. Now, is that picture, is that considered a bulk? Oh, yeah, let's see the pitch again. Good call. Let me see what happens. Did he stop? He what didn't did the pitch. Pitcher do? Did he, so, what did he do? I don't really know what a bulk is, but I, that's what. Let's see here. So he wound up. <laughs> and then he oh, stopped. Oh, I don't know, because he didn't. He didn't pitch. Yeah. All right, well, I hope that guy's okay. Let's let's see the next one. We've got a couple. Oh yeah, here's a good drunk guy versus stairs. Oh god. Ooh. I don't think that person's crying or laughing. <laughs> Ooh. Is it ironic that he's wearing a red cross red cross shirt? <laughs> Is he wearing? Like they're gonna have to call the red cross. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, I would have laid there too. I wouldn't even got up. Is is he wearing a thong? Is, like, do you see the like his butt crack with this? I, I can't tell. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. His pants kind of come down. Yeah. Well, that's a skinny no, jean. That that's skinny jean problems. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. Skinny jean problems yeah. with no waist to yeah. speak of yeah. to hold it's it up. It's all skinny jean issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope that guy's okay. Let's check out the next one. That was some bar. Oh, okay. This one requires sound. And this one, it's not a guy falling down. Just listen to what he, people tagged me in this because they thought it was me. Oh. It's a ginger with a beard with a thick southern accent, and I love the way he talks. Let's just listen and soak this up. I pull out there on the track. I'm going to throw my nuts over my shoulder, skinny pedal down, and I'm going to let her eat like an Ethiopian orphan out there at the buffet line. I'll be toting that left front wheel like an astronaut bar coming around the damn corner, man. Let them know it ain't no bitch in my blood. We ain't leaving the house. Now, I'm trying to wonder if it's fake, because you don't see him talk a lot. 
Yeah, they get they get a footage of him. Yeah. I'll be toting that left front wheel like an astronaut coming around the damn corner, man. Let them know it ain't no bitch in my blood. We ain't leave the house pawing on my granddad's gun swore out my sister and sell off all these paintings and tattoos. Let them know it ain't no bitch in my blood. We ain't leave the house pawing on my granddad's gun swore out my sister and sell off all these paint bills. Come in, set them. There's a lot of information in there. Did That's, you understand some, most of it or any of it? Or some somebody of it? threw his nuts over his shoulder. Okay. He did do that. He came out of the corner like an astronaut. I heard that. And, and Something tried to sell his sister. Sold his sister and was looking, trying to eat the dirt like an Ethiopian farmer. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Is that my clothes? That this was is close. like a Ric Flair promo. Before. Something about astronauts, uh, drug pill, uh, uh, pills. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear it one more time. <laughs> hey, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you, we can do this live, but I'm wondering later on if someone could actually turn the captions on and see what it tries to come up with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like, like later on, can someone throw captions on this thing? See what it thinks he's trying to say. Let's hear it one more time and uh, try to pay attention there. I want to hear if I can hear what he says. I'll be the coolest guy in the world. But once I pull world. out there on the track, I'm going to throw my nuts over my shoulder, skinny pedal down, and I'm going to let her eat like an Ethiopian orphan out there at the buffet line. I'll be toting that buffet left line. front wheel like an astronaut bar coming around the damn corner, man. Let them know it ain't no bitch in my blood. We ain't leave the house. Pawn off my granddad's gun, swore out my sister, and sell off all these pain pills. Come in, set them. Okay, there's a lot of so things he did he not sold do. He sold off the pain so he, yeah. <laughs> He didn't do all that to come, come in second. second. Right. Yeah. There's a couple things I didn't understand, but I hope it's real because uh, that dude's funny and entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would love to hear an interview with him after every race that yeah. he wins, you know. All right. Uh, is that all of them, the other? <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Good deal. Let's move on. Uh, happy Easter, everybody. Hope you had a good one. You know, hope you uh, 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 got to see your mama and all that good stuff. Go to church. Um, Sebastian, yes. did you have a good Easter? Did you get an Easter basket? Did you give an Easter Dude, basket? Dude, I cannot. Easter gets on my nerves. Okay. I hear you. I'm the angry You're the Easter. angry Easter guy? I'm the angry Some Easter guy. Some people get mad at Christmas because I don't have to buy gifts. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So no right. Easter for you. No dyed eggs. I, I want to <laughs> dye eggs. My girlfriend just said that was dumb. Yeah. Well, last last week we said, are you still getting or giving an Easter basket yeah. to children? And what age is the cutoff? <clears throat> yeah, this annoys me too. Yeah. But I'm sure you got people who commented. Well, Jody got me an Easter basket. Oh! That's so sweet. <laughs> Wasn't it though? After you had, yeah. Well, I talked about it last week. Yeah. Did she that's also like, not watch the show? She watches. Yeah. That's, I think that's partly why she did it. Oh. And I love you, honey. I think it was... Uh, we asked, we said, what is the age for you to cut off getting an Easter basket? You're thinking maybe 51? Uh, 13? <laughs> but she always gets her kids Easter baskets. And I think while she was out, I'll just get another one for John. And I, I've been eating the chocolate from it. I love it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, we're going to read the comments later about that. You'll see what people think. Yeah. And I agree with somebody in the comments section. Um, in a minute. Now let's talk about NC State. <laughs> Congrats, <laughs> NC State men and women's making the final four. Um, and I believe UConn yes. also has yeah, their first women's. time in history. First time in history, two teams have both men and women's in the final yes. four. They're, they are all taking the same performance enhancing drugs at the same cafeteria. <laughs> okay, very good. I haven't watched any of the, the female side of anything, but I've heard that that is awesome to watch right now as well. Didn't yes. you just watch? Yeah, we watched it last night. What game did you watch? We watched both. I watched both of them, but the Iowa game. With mm -hmm. the Kaylin Clark, yeah. fantastic versus LSU versus LSU, and they do they how bad do they beat them? Uh, I think they maybe eight points. Oh, so it's kind of yeah. close. But Caitlin Clark went off, right? Yeah, yeah, she hit like like nine threes from the half court yeah. line almost. Yeah, so yeah, that girl's crazy. So uh, congrats to them as well. But let's get back to NC State. Um, I predicted. That this last game, hmm. that Duke was going to win. Wow. Now, I do this for two reasons. <laughs> for lack of... <laughs> One, to, to throw voodoo on my friends who are not rooting for State. Hey. I like to give them false confidence, let them think that I'm on their side. 
And it also, if state were to lose, they get to say, well, I told you so. Yeah. And also, uh, if they win, it just makes it look even better. You know, so I don't like to jinx myself, so I reverse jinx it on other people. Like Keith is a big Duke fan. Yeah. So I said, congrats, buddy, you got this one wrapped up. I predict Duke wins 74, state 69. And I believe the final score was 76, 64, state. And what a game. Did you happen to watch yes, that game? Yes, watch that game. How, let's talk about this DJ Burns guy. Yeah. Big baby, boy. baby Shaq. Baby Shaq. What I love about him, and again, I, I've not been watching, I don't watch basketball ever because I've had no reason to watch basketball. Uh, State's not been good for a long time. And I really don't like the way they play anymore. It mm. seems to, I, I, maybe I'm the weird one. I like watching a good fundamental thing happen. I like to watch a crazy bounce pass, a yeah. no-look pass, um, a nice screen pick and roll when it's done right. Like I love watching Malone, Stockton and Malone. Yeah. I love the way they work together. And I don't like the way they play now. It's like you get one or two players who are the stars of the team, one good point guard. All right, DJ Horn for, for yeah. State. There are times I'm shaking my head like, why did you take that shot? I mean, you got, we got a crazy rebound. We run down. He doesn't let the other players get down there and form a play. He just goes up there and throws it up. I'm like, what was that? We're, we're leading. Take your time. Develop a play. So, so I stopped watching because that, that seems to be the norm in most basketball today. So I'm like, I, I'm not interested in fast break, slam dunk, fast breaks. You know, I'd like to see a nice play develop. But I started watching this year because my school's doing well. And uh, they're finally playing like a well-oiled machine. You know, mm -hmm. everyone knows their role. Uh, and just to watch... DJ Burns Jr. back into people the way he does. And then also, not only is he just slamming into them like this and then slowly getting to the goal, he'll fake turn this way and then go another way. And he's got some touch. It's not just like big man get ball, rebound, you know, shoot backboard. He's like doing fadeaways, he's doing crazy hooks, he's doing stuff, backboard shots. I mean, if, when he is on, it feels like he's unstoppable. And I will yeah. say that, too, about uh, DJ Horn, because he does shoot a lot of threes uh, to success sometimes. But then sometimes he misses. That's the three. That's, you know, that's the yeah. double-edged sword with the three-pointer. But what are your thoughts? You're the basketball guy. I think they look great. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm a Carolina guy, but, yeah. you know, it's good when all three are good. It Thank makes you. it makes a better conference. It makes more fun for everybody. Yeah, and they haven't been that way in a long time. So, right. I remember the '83 team. Yeah, I was I watched it when 11 yeah. years old. I saw it. I agree with you. Me and Alan were talking about that beforehand. Where we we're gonna get you into this. We're gonna come up with a master plan to push Duke down and bring State up. Duke Carolina seems to be the rival within the last 20 years. Yeah. 30 years, NC State's just kind of dropped down in basketball. Football, we're always right there with you, but mm. basketball, it's always kind of dropped down. So now we're going to push Duke out, get back to the old school 80s rivalry where it's Carolina and State, and then Duke just down here. Yeah. Are we good with this math? I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. We can do that. Good. All right, April 6th, NC State versus Purdue. Who you got? I've got State. Really? Me and FanDuel and DraftKings and <laughs> Bet BGHM and yeah. Bet ESPN Bets. We're all going you to State. You have money on State. Go I have money on State. Okay. I believe the magic is going to happen. It feels that way. I believe in the Easter Bunny, NC State, and the Tooth Fairy. I'm almost afraid to agree with you because my theory. You go, you're going to do your jinx, your I double have to jinx, jinx pack. My team. How do you beat this seven foot four dude? From Purdue. Well, How do you beat that dude? We used to beat guys that tall with one move. Talk about it. And I can teach DJ this move. <laughs> okay. It's an elbow low. Elbow one low. time. Oh. He'll never be the same after the first two minutes. Get him in that mid shot a couple and times. Mid, mid journey. He'll slowly start. He'll go from 7'4 to 6'3 in a heartbeat. Ooh. DJ Burns Jr., I hope you're watching this. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, 
But then how do we beat the winners of UConn versus Alabama? I think we could beat Alabama. I don't know how we beat UConn. Mm-hmm. UConn's beating everybody by 20 points. Right? Uh, Aren't they beating the crap out of They're beating teams? everybody by 20 points. Yeah. So that one's going to be a a good, be a good maybe find out where they're going to eat the night before. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Didn't someone try to do that to Michael Jordan? Yeah. Send him a, a nasty yeah. pizza before yeah. a game? Oh, yeah. All right, sleuths, get on that. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm rooting for State. Uh, so, you know Ken Jeong, the comedian? Yes. So he's a big hey, Duke, Duke guy. guy. Yeah. So I always have to do my little dance. So let me just give you the history of the dance. For those of you who don't know, after every State victory, I have to do the State shuffle. And it started accidentally a long time ago, well, maybe a year ago. I was at an NC State football game. NC State versus Florida State. I was in the tailgate parking lot, whatever. And the marching band comes by. Oh, yeah, my buddy Dunlap was like, John, 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 come here, come here, quick, 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 do something funny. I'll record it. And I'm just, I wasn't thinking, and, and I'm like, okay. And then they're playing, so I just start, I just start doing a goofy dance and start doing mm-hmm. this move, right? Put that up after every victory. Now it's turned into a thing. There are people doing that and sending it to me after state victories. Yeah. So that's the history of it. I don't think it's a good dance. Have I had I thought it out, I would come up with something much better. Uh, but it's pretty easy to do. And, yeah, I posted that. <laughs> <laughs> and I tagged Ken Jung, yeah. who's a big Duke guy. Yeah. And I said, my apologies to Ken Jung. And then he texts me back. He, no, he texts me. I didn't even know he had my number. <laughs> Which means now I got your number, Ken. So I will be contacting you. I haven't replied to this yet. But he sent me this great game, brother, and LOL at the shout out. Two laughy face emojis. And he goes, Burns is just an incredible, one-of-a-kind talent and so lovable. And Horn was on fire. Such a special team honestly reminds me of 83. Hope all is well. Miss you and love, love you much. To you and your family, love Ken. So I love, I love Ken. So I had to tag him because he's always the face of Duke basketball whenever they... And he went to Carolina and Duke, by the way. Oh, yeah, he's a smart guy. Yeah. So I maybe, guess he can pick and choose. Maybe you get the mass Singer and come yeah. out in a Duke... You could have a Duke uh, mascot head. Yeah. I should. Uh, oh, I do the. I'm the yeah. mask singer. You're the mask singer. You come out in the Duke mascot head. And I can't sing at all. Yeah, like <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, uh, Kevin Hart just did that. Pranked yeah. him. Oh. Yeah. So. What was Kevin Hart? Uh, do you remember his costume? It was weird. I forget. Did it have something to do with Ken Jeong? No. But okay. So, but that's they knew mind. him, and he sang as bad as he could, and they still know him. I know. So I come out with a big Duke Blue Devil yeah. head. Yeah. I sing a song horribly, take the head off, and it's the Tar Heel Ram. <laughs> it's a double head. Yeah, two heads. <laughs> and I'm like, wait. And then sing again. I actually sing pretty good. Pull it off, Mr. <laughs> Tuffy. We'll State sing. head. And then it's like the stackable dolls. Yeah. It takes four to get to me. All right. Um, so congrats to NC State. And um, I've been posting these videos a lot recently. And I've been pissing people off. You know, I've been using words like uh, Tarmart fans mm-hmm. and wall heels. And people have been uh, going after me on social media, coming at me. And I get it. I've hurt some feelings. And, I, and it's unclear. The waters are murky about like, well, John, I didn't go to this school. Am I allowed to root for them? John, you didn't go to... Why do you root for the Carolina Panthers? You didn't go there. There's all these... <sighs> unclear messages going on. So what I had to do was come up with 35. Okay. I, I'm sorry, do what? Okay, I, I'm looking at the calls. Are you saying there's 35 on the line? No, no, no. Okay, no, no. gotcha. No, I'm, I'm sorry, didn't mean to throw you off. No, <laughs> I, I, when you hovered over the calls, I, th- I saw there were 35. Oh, no, 35 lines. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought like, holy crap, I gotta take these. No, I haven't opened it up yet. All right, so don't forget, call in later for your chance to win uh, money. Screen Actors Guild residual check, but I have to get to this because I put some work into this. I came up with the rules and regulations. Let me, uh, I'll pull it up here. I I, I typed this up. You topped it up. I typed this up (laughs) and I want this to be like the Declaration of Independence, okay? (laughs) So what I've come up with here is the rules and regulations on rooting in college athletics 
or you could say the official. Yeah, go back to the first. Oh yeah, no that. Which one? Which yeah, one? hang on. Bylaws and mandates. Which one do you want? Let's go back to the bylaws and mandates one. Okay. That one. All right. So these are the bylaws and mandates for the governance of rooting in college athletics. In layman's terms, who's allowed to root for who and why? Ah. In college basketball, college athletics. This has nothing to do with pro athletics or high school athletics. This is just college athletics. Okay. And just like the Declaration of Independence, we have articles <laughs> and sections. Article right. one, <laughs> allegiance to alma mater. Basically, that means be true to your school. Let it be known that every individual shall hold true allegiance to their alma mater, rooting with unyielding passion and fidelity for the athletic teams of the very institution whence their education was procured. <laughs> All right. Section two, people are allowed to root for any college of their choosing only if their college has been eliminated from the playoffs or championship rounds. Uh -huh. So what that means, Alan Jackson went to Carolina. That's his school. Right now, they are not playing in the Final Four. That doesn't mean he's not allowed to watch the Final Four or root for a certain team. He is now allowed to root for any team of his choosing because his team was eliminated. Right. So I, I don't, I'm not trying to punish people for enjoying college athletics. There are hierarchy and there are rules. So that is Article 1, Allegiance to Alma Mater. Now, Article 2. State representation in athletic patronage. In layman's terms, uh, you're allowed to root for the college team of your choosing only if the state you reside in does not have a professional team. Or how it's worded here. In the event that the state of one's domicile lacks representation through a professional athletic entity, the individual is heron granted the liberty to bestow their support upon the collegiate team of their choosing within the said state's boundaries. All that means is, for example, Alabama. Mm. They don't have a professional team. There's no professional football team, although some people would say at Roll Tide, that's professional. No. It's not in the NFL. And there's no NBA team. All right. So you're kind of screwed in that sense. So yes, if you're in a state that doesn't have the pro team, you could pick whatever college team you want. You never had to have gone there, and you could root for them. No questions asked. All right. Article 3. Non-alumnus athletic affiliation. Okay, here's where it gets dicey. <sighs> Section 1. Those individuals not having partaken in higher education at a college or university may extend their support to any collegiate team of their choosing. However, they are hereby prohibited from engaging in derogatory banter against rival teams and from adorning themselves or their property with the official regalia of said team within a 24-hour grace period of any game, lest they be accused of stolen valor. Hmm. So in layman's terms, <laughs> if you did not go to that school, you're not allowed to root for... You, if you did not go to that school, you're still allowed to root for them, but you can't talk trash and you can't wear the gear within 24 hours of the game. 24 oh, hours before. There's a, there's a time well, frame. Wait, I, think, I think to clarify, John, because we, we were going over these nuts and bolts earlier. Yeah. They can wear the, the apparel yeah. within the 24-hour radius of a game. Radius. So it's 12 hours like, before, yeah. 12 hours after. But the radius, after nothing. that time period is expired, then your, your rules and regulations say they are not allowed to wear right. the regalia after that time. Do those rules change on a leap year? No. No. Say, same no, I haven't considered that. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> I've got to go to the board about that. Uh, so if you, if you get caught wearing it outside of that, it's stolen valor. And we're going to get into the punishments. You know, what... what what, what happens if you break the rules. Um, and you're not allowed to use the pronoun we oh, yeah. when referring to a team ever. You have to know your role, 
know your place and stay in your lane. So if you didn't go to a school and you're talking about them, you're like, yeah, we had a tough game. No penalty. We didn't. You have no, there's no we in this. Mm -hmm. You have to say the team's name. You have to say they, this is a pronoun thing. He, him, yeah. they, them. Right? Shim sham. This is where it, this is where it, this is where it uh, happens. I right, got phone calls. All right. Uh, section four. Let me go to that last one. Here we go. Section four. Article four, rather. <laughs> I love this one. Youthful enthusiasm and potential. Section one. All persons beneath the age of 18 years are afforded the privilege to endorse any collegiate team they desire in recognition of their unfulfilled potential and the prospect <laughs> matriculation at such institutions. Nevertheless, it is recommended, but not mandated, <laughs> that the youth's support be primarily directed towards educational establishments within the confines of their own state. So that basically that means anyone under the age of 18 is allowed to root for any team they want because they don't know, any they don't know where they're going yet. They might end up at that school, hmm. they might not. We don't know yet. So you're allowed to root because you could end up there. Um, but section two to that. Mm. People of any age are afforded the privilege to endorse any collegiate team they so desire if they have been diagnosed with a mental illness. Ah. Oh. So that being said, I had an uncle named Kenneth who was <laughs> had a mental illness. Big Carolina fan. Yeah. You can't make fun of him. Yeah. He's allowed, can't shame him. He can root for whoever he wants. All right, so just know that. That's it. <laughs> Those are the rules and regulations on rooting for college athletics. And I'll get to this one real quick. Uh, the next one um, is the official classification and precedence of college athletic supporters. And basically that is the rankings and hierarchy of college fans. Where do you fall in this? So at the very top, the top tier, platinum elite tier. All right, this is number one. Now, uh, this is the version that I'm going to put out to the world because it looks very official. It looks like the Declaration yeah. of Independence. But I'm actually going to read this to you in layman's terms so everyone at home can understand. All right, so platinum elite is basically your players and your coaching staff. Right? Platinum. That's elite. platinum elite. Elite. So you are the top number one Uno. You get to do basically anything you want because you're actually playing or coaching the team. All right. Second level, platinum. That is the immediate family of the players and the coaching staff. Now, when I say immediate, that's mom, dad. Oh, <laughs> you got it broken down. Yeah. Well, people just sometimes don't know what immediate means. Oh. Mom, dad, brother, sister, son, daughter. That's it. I will accept step oh. members as long as they reside in the, ho the house. Oh, right. And right. on the tax form. Right. Yeah. If they're in the house and they're step, that does count. Yeah. All right. So that's platinum. Number three, diamond. Students. So if you're a student of a school, you're a diamond member. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's high up. I'm not even in this yet, where I rank. Oh, you rank yourself? I'm four. I'm not one, two, or three. I'm four. Gold member. That's alumni, professors, faculty, staff. You're number four. After that, number five, silver. That's immediate family of students, including step people who live <laughs> in the home. Alumni, faculty, and staff. You're silver. After that, number six, bronze. Everybody else, American citizens, U.S. civilians. And then number seven, pewter, any citizen of another country besides America. So that being said, uh, I come in at number three. Alan Jackson is a three. Four. We're a four, John. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not. We used just, to be a three. We're just gold. We used to be a three. Oh, yeah, back in the day. But now we've been demoted to four because we, we graduated. We are level four thanks to your classification. By the way, I did put in here, you didn't have to graduate from the school. You did have to attend it at some point. See, if you ever paid a tuition oh, to that school, you still yeah. qualify. What about a major? If you had a major that we really wouldn't be considered athletic, would you still 
What do you qualify? mean? Qualify? I mean, like if you, let's just say, for example, maybe you were a theater major or oh, something. Yeah. Yes. Would you still be qualified? To do what? To root for an athletic team. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, I would just yeah, check they're it. they're still falling in the diamond tier. Level. Still oh, falling. Yeah. I would yeah. just that, check it. It's what you major in. Document, Sean, so doesn't it's matter. The of the school. What you actually major in, if the school provides it as so a major you, and you do it. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, good. <laughs> But I'm saying on your behalf, if you had attended one semester. One semester. You know, but maybe you got kicked out for trying to sell jewelry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> You're still in this mix. Okay, thanks. For yeah. that school. Go Because that one brought up to me, he goes, well, what about someone who went to a university but doesn't play in that division? For example, I got a lot of friends that went to App State. Yeah. Western Carolina, Lenorine, Wofford. They're like, well, where do we fall on these rules and regulations and hierarchy? Yes, you went to college, but you didn't go to these colleges. Hmm. So you have to root for your school, mm -hmm. okay? That's where you got to stay in your lane, root for those people. <laughs> You're allowed to root for other teams. Yeah. But you can't talk trash. Can't talk trash. And you only have 24-hour grace period to wear the gear. <laughs> Otherwise, it's stolen valor. Stolen valor. Right. right. Now you know what I stolen understand. valor is? Yeah, well... Like if That's a military, a, if someone yeah. pretends to be a sergeant yeah. or a colonel in the military and some other guy goes, what are you doing? You're trying to steal our valor. I feel that. I don't want people thinking I'm a fair weather so if I said state I was, fan. If I, 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 said I, I went, went to, to school there. If I went to state yeah. and I came and said, yeah, I'm state. I went to state. And then you would quiz me and say, really? Mm -hmm. What was the department of? Yeah. Who's whatever? your favorite? Yeah. Who's your favorite professor down right. there? What year were you? What dog did they and have? And I didn't know the answer. Now I'll be committing stolen valor. Stolen valor. Yeah. And now you're thinking, well, what's the punishment? No. Oh. <laughs> right. Because I can't really enforce these because they're not real. It's, I just made them up. It's how I feel. But I think it's, yeah. But what are the punishments going to be? All we can really do is shame you on social media. So that, the punishments are going to be levels of social media shaming. Yeah. Okay. So if a number one, a platinum elite, goes after another platinum elite, okay, yeah. that'd be like a DJ uh, Burns Jr. going after uh, a Baycott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's even Steven. They're allowed to go after all they Pro want. Town Neutron, they just cancel them. It cancels they out. Cancel them. No penalties whatsoever. Equals out. Now... Now we got greater let's than just go one now? level down. Let's say a a level three diamond member. Oh, that's a student. Yeah, goes after a platinum elite. Oh, that student has to be publicly shamed. <laughs> publicly shamed. Yeah. yeah, and the the shaming gets worse depending on what level you are going after. So the worst that could ever happen would be a number seven pewter going after a one. That's automatic. I mean, you're banned. Probably going to get thrown off of Twitter. No X. warning. Right. Right. You're done. What we do there. That's Trump problems there. 100%. Yeah. What we do there is get the committee and have to form a committee. Form the committee in the yeah. boardroom. And we're all going to go after you on social media. It's yeah. like 50, maybe 100 people will report you to Meta. Where we actually yeah. say, file a report. This guy harassed me public. This guy. Uh, spreading, spreading fake news. Yeah, <laughs> there's different ways you could do it. Yeah. but if you it get, showed nudity, what? Well, right? See, it only yeah. took one person to get me locked down. Yeah. So but imagine 50 people coming after. You. Yeah, 50. Yeah, there are repercussions. Yeah. People should be scared. to your actions. So know that we haven't really sussed out the levels of shame on social media. So if you have uh, suggestions for social media shaming, <laughs> leave it in the comments sections, all right? And let us know how you feel about it. All right. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on, man. We got a lot of people on the phones. <laughs> Alan, did I forget anything in our rules and regulations? Um, I don't think you forgot anything, but I am looking forward to all the blowback you're going to get from a lot of people online who have been commenting about this during the show. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you have to yes. follow up with them next week. I think yeah. that'll be fun to see. Yeah. It's going to make for a great pod, you guys. <laughs> All righty then. So just know you allow. Let me also say this. Oh, something else. One last else. thing. One last thing. We'll go to phone calls. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of new state fans. You know what I mean? Yeah. That fall into some of these categories. Yeah. Just know the rules. Yeah. You can you can say nice things about any team all the time, uh, and there will be no repercussions. 
You just can't say negative things and you can't wear the gear within a 24 hour period. So, That's really the biggest part. So the game is Saturday night? Yeah, Saturday so night. So they have from Friday evening to Saturday night yeah. where they can wear Opposite gear, yeah. The gear, or Sunday. Any gear you want, really. Any gear you want. You have because a radius. They, it's a radius. 24 hour radius. It's a radius. Okay, yeah. all right. Sorry. So I'm saying this to the new state fans, to the new state fans that are that are that are oh. out there, your ah. school's out of it, and now you're rooting for us. Get on in here. I love you. There's plenty of room Come on here. the bandwagon. Come Plenty of room, right? You go go get you some state stuff. There's plenty out there. <laughs> well, actually, there's not now because ah. they're winning. Welcome aboard. Happy to have you. Just know the rules and stay in your lane. All right. Here we go. So last week I said, um, did you get an Easter basket? What age should that stop? Christina Laxton, she goes, when they move out, it stops. Oh, they'll never move out. Well, that's, I think that's the rule that most moms kind of do subconsciously. Yeah, they don't like, want them to move out. It, <laughs> Which one, the kids or the moms? The moms. Yeah, kind of true. Yeah. Kind of true. Moms always want them around. Dads are like, well, you need to go out there and earn. Yeah. You know? I'm not going to be around forever. So I think there's something to it. I think most moms do it and don't even know they're doing it. If the kid is still in the house, you're getting an Easter basket. And that's what, that's what Jody did. So both her kids got one. Um, Joel Fry. Our buddy Joel Fry, who wrote the theme yeah. song to Country Ish, she said, I still get an Easter basket from my mom. Even after requests to stop, she won't, LOL. You got a good mom, she loves you. Uh, Carla Centers, all my kids still get Easter baskets, including my 24-year-old. I put corn dogs in his basket because he doesn't like chocolate. Oh, I love that, Carla. Corn dogs, why not? You can do little mini ones that come in the shape of an egg. Yeah. You could paint the corn dogs. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could use some food dye and have different colored corn dogs. Yeah, paint the corn stick. nuggets. Paint the sticks, too. Yeah, paint the stick. Have fun. Go hide corn dogs. Hide them in those bushes that look like corn dogs. That's uh, ca uh, cow cowtails. Cowtails. What cow what's it called? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Wood, never. You're never too old for candy unless you got the diabetes. <laughs> True, Jeremy. Uh, my wife got me an Easter basket, like I said, and uh, at first I giggled. I'm always happy anytime someone gets me something, and I hugged her and I told her I love her. And then uh, I'm, I ate plenty of that candy. Mm. So thank you. Scott Reese, did you ever get those giant things that look like jelly beans? Ugh. They had an awful taste yes. and like a white gritty inside. Yes, that's what we did. We did this a couple years ago on the show. Remember we had a contest they're called... Uh, they're big. You, how many can we stuff in our mouth? Oh, peeps. Peeps. Is that what he's talking about? I think so. He's yeah. talking about those giant things that look like jelly beans. They had an awful taste. They did. They had an awful taste. Well, the, yeah, they do. <laughs> but I, Scott, I don't know what you're talking about exactly. I don't think he's talking about peeps. If, if, if you can put, leave in the comment section a picture of what you're talking about. Whenever you get time. You don't have to do it right now. I'd like to, I'd like to see what you're talking about. Marlon Mashburn, happy birthday. Just enjoyed some South in your mouth barbecue sauce with our pork loin. It's awesome, BBQ sauce. Glad I brought two bottles at your show last Saturday. The show was great, bought two bottles. Thank you, Marlon, appreciate you. Uh, Amy Shaver, agree to disagree. I was raised a Wolfpack fan and will continue to wear my state shirts all day, every day. I didn't go to state. I joined the Navy instead, LOL. Okay, well, this is one of the rules. Oh. She technically is only allowed to wear state stuff within a 24-hour period of a game. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sticking to it. And she needs to be wearing Navy stuff more often, mm. right? I'm sure the Navy has a basketball team and they would do. love for you to support them, you know? It, I will support the Navy when the state's not playing. <laughs> I love the Navy. And, and Amy, thank you for your service and uh, go pack and thank you for watching this show all right alan do we take a quick break no nah, man let's push on through let's push on through normally i take a break here but we got people on hold Ooh. thank you all for calling come over here sebastian let's do it all righty so what i'm gonna do here oh happy peanut butter and jelly day everybody um i got you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich betty reap right there oh yes 
Um, well, all John, right. John, do you need a break? No, I don't. You're good? No, we don't need a break. Yeah, keep push on through. Let's power oh, through. All right. So I've got three unopened residual checks right here. I don't know how much is in them. Uh, earlier, we picked a number between one and three, and what was the number? Number was three. Number three. One, two, three. three. We're going to play with that check today. And uh, if you don't know, if you're new to the show, what we're doing, uh, I'm not just a podcaster and a comedian or a Wolfpack fan I am all, or alumni. Uh, gold member. Uh, I am also an actor. I've been in movies, sitcoms, commercials, voiceovers, you name it, I've done it. And when they air them, they have to pay me. They're called residual checks. I made a game out of it. I don't know how much is in here. I'm going to open this envelope. I'm going to tell you what it's for, what movie, what TV show. And then you call in with a guess. We're going to take three calls at random. And there's Ooh, a randomizer. Got you. And you're going to guess the amount of the check. Closest person to the actual amount will win the check. It is a game that we like to call How Much Is That Screen Actor Guild Residual Check? All right. Oh, yeah. Still got it. You got to open it. I can't open it. I'll open it. You forgot how to play the game. Oh, yeah. I'll I'm open guessing. It. Because yeah, we want, do in-house guessing. Unless you want to give and receive like that that, that triangle game, pyramid. Oh, things right. uh, things that are uh, state fans, uh, <laughs> bandwagon. Um, right. I haven't played that in forever. Yeah. Bandwagon. I, I went to the school. I'm a gold member. <laughs> That's why I come up with I came up with the status. I'm a gold member. I'm not pewter. Come on, pewter. All right. By the way, you just broke the rule. Oh! This is a pewter going after a gold member right here. You're <laughs> going to get publicly shot. I don't have a radius. You're going to get a warning. <laughs> get a warning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. This check is for one episode of American Dad. Ooh. The episode was called tough. Damn Stan. Pay TV. One check. Damn Stan. Y'all start guessing. But here's how you should gauge your guess. I'm going to have Sebastian guess. I'm going to have Moose guess, and I'll tell you who's closest. That'll gauge. You'll know how to gauge your guess. How much is this check? Uh, American Dad, that's a big one. Yeah. $24.37. $24.37. Lock him in. Woo! Moose. Hey, John Boy. Yes, sir. What is your guess? Nine seventy nine. Nine dollars and seventy nine cents, or nine hundred and seventy nine dollars. Nine dollars seventy nine cents American. Okay, he is locked in. Woo! If I had to give this check to one of these two men, your guess was twenty four dollars and yep. something. His was nine to something. I have to give it to Moose. Moose is closest. And by the way, by the way, we're not playing Price is Right rules. It's whoever's closest to the amount, higher or lower of the check. Right. I call it horseshoes and hand grenades. You know, whatever's closer. Above or below, side, but there. All right. The Alan Jackson. Let's get some people up in here. Uh, Sebastian, spin the ball of balls. These oh, balls yeah. have numbers on them. And the number that is on the ball is the number of caller we're going to take in the order in which it was received. And right here, caller number 54. Ooh, the 54. Alan Jackson. Whenever you're ready, let caller number 54, 54 into that... the showroom. All we'll right. Talk to number 54 is in the room. Hey there, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? Tony Pennington. Con, wh who? Tony Pennington. Wait a minute, do I know you? No, you talked to my wife a couple of weeks ago on the same show. Oh, okay. Maybe that's where, where are you calling from? Uh, Springdale, Arkansas. Springdale, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you this. Uh, do you guys have a professional basketball team in Arkansas? We do not. Do you have a professional NFL team? We do not. That means this man is allowed to root for any college team he wants to without any repercussions. Wow. Yeah. Privilege. Because it's not his fault. He lives in Ozarks. <laughs> okay, buddy. Uh, have you ever seen... And you're, not, you, you're, you're probably not going to like me who I like. Oh. It doesn't matter. But go ahead and let's hear it. I'm a Florida State fan. 
Oh, that's definitely worth cutting off. Florida right now. State. How do you go from Arkansas? Say it is preferred within the rules <laughs> that you stick to a team within Arkansas. What made you jump outside of your state to go all the way to Florida? I like their uniforms growing up. It's color. Okay. All right. Well, that's probably how he <laughs> picked his brackets, too. Yeah. That's probably why he's leading. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Picks it like a woman. Well, I like their colors. I like their math caught. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for calling in. What do you do for a living? I'm a general contractor. A, a, a general contractor? Yes, sir. All right. So generally speaking, what do you do? <laughs> Home repair and remodeling. Oh, okay. Well, I'm getting my bathroom done pretty soon, so... Why don't you uh, head on over to Hickory and do me a favor, oversee this. We can do it. <laughs> okay, buddy, you ever watch American Dad? I have not. All right, well, I still need your guess. One episode, American Dad. This was only my voice. It was a voiceover. It's a cartoon. What is your guess? I'm going to say eight thirty-nine. Eight dollars and thirty-nine. You got it. All right, don't hang up. We're going to take two more callers. Lock them in. Woo! All right. Spin the ball of balls. And let's pick Next another number. number. See if they can oh. do better. Oh. Is his name Conley? Was that his name? Conley? It's hard to understand. You know what this number is. Caller number 45. What? 45. 45 for me, when I think of the number 45, I think of Chuck Swink, who played high school football with me, and he was number 45. I think of David Swink. Is that his brother? David Swink was his brother. I went to school with David. All but right. 45's on the line. All right. <laughs> He's like, Hello. Man. I'm glad you did it. Yes, sir. <laughs> what is your name? Uh, Andy Green. Andy, Andy Green. Green. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling in. Where are you calling in from today? Uh, I'm calling from Portland, Oregon, where the women's NC State basketball team just got to the final four. Yeah, wow. baby. Are we excited for this? Yes, sir. I see you have a 910 area code, which makes me think that at one time you lived in eastern North Carolina. I am from Wilmington, North Carolina. Yep. I went to NC State between 09 and 2013. Gold member. We're talking to a gold member. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, brother. What do you do for a living out there? What, what, How would you get to Portland? Oh, bad decisions, following a girl down here. Oh, bad decisions. But what'd you say after bad decisions? He <laughs> followed a girl. Oh, yeah. That happens, buddy. Listen, I, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with Portland. They're, they're, when I went there in the early 2000s, it was fun. They, they have a whole slogan, kind of like uh, Austin, keep it yeah. weird. Like, they love being weird. Oh, right. Yeah, and you know who's got more street clubs? It's gotten clubs? too weird. Than any state in the country? Portland. It's either Portland or Oregon. Oregon or Florida. And I think they go neck and neck. Some years it's Tampa some, or, or Florida, and other years it's Oregon. Hmm. So I don't know what, how that factors into my love or hate with it, but, but they're pretty out there. There's two within fun. like 10 blocks of my house. What's that? There's two strip clubs within 10 blocks of my house. It's that, uh, yeah, <laughs> so twelve, 12, 12 Starbucks. They got more tattoos out there than they do in Florida. That's the only thing. More <laughs> nose piercings, which I'm not a fan of. I'm yeah. like, oh, you got a little boogie. Oh no, that's you did that yeah. on purpose. Okay, my friend. Um, the people watching is amazing. I'll, I'll give you that much here. People right. Watching is great. No, it is. Lots of weed. Yeah. So I, it's fun. <laughs> people are fun, but they've got a little too crazy out there for me. And by the way, I wrote a song, which is a spoof slash. Uh, not a spoof, it's more of a uh, parody. Parody, kind of? Tribute? Oh, yeah. More of a tribute to uh, uh, rich men north of Richmond called Poor Men South of Portland. Have you heard that? <laughs> I don't think I have. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Look up on YouTube my version. It's called Poor Men South of Portland. And uh, tell me what you think. But first, we've got to get your guess. One episode of American Dad. How much is this check, my friend? All right, I was going to say 1983, $19.83, <laughs> but the, the, the number was a little, seemed to be a little closer to the lower. Right. So I'm just going to go $10.13. 
Ten dollars and thirteen cents. You are locked in. Do not hang up. We gotta take one more caller. Woo! All right. So last Bastion, ball. Spin the ball of balls. Get the last ball number, and put your ball in my hand. Here we are. Caller number twenty. Mm. Barry Sanders. Yes. Right. Caller number twenty. Wait, who was fifty-four? Randy Watt, Dallas Cowboys. Oh, there you go. There it is. All right, Alan, All right, whenever you're ready. Caller number 20 is in the room. Hi there, John Reap. Who am I talking to? Hold on, we just lost caller number 20. Oh, caller number 20 dropped out. Yes, he did. Okay. Or she did. Well, Sorry. then pick, spin the ball of balls again. Let's get One more spin. Number. Let's get a new number. 20 hung up randomly at the last minute. All right, so this would be caller number 21. What are the freaking odds? That you actually pick, I'm, I want y'all to know this at home. This is not rigged. The first one was 20, and then he randomly picked 21. That never happens. Anyway, caller number 21. Alan, you let him in. Oh, uh, right. caller number 21 is in the room. All right. Hi there. This is John Reap. Who am I talking to? Loopy Larry. Loopy Larry, we got hey, your Loopy. sticker on. Can you see me, Loopy? What is up, Mr. John Reap? How's my buddy? How's my buddy Loopy Larry doing? I'm doing fantastic. Just got done with uh, closing up the restaurant, and I uh, tuned in, and I was just like, man, I'm gonna try to call and win one of these residual checks. I got a, I got a feeling that this is my lucky chance, and sure enough, look at that. Okay, buddy. Well, I know you, which means they're gonna root for him. I have no. No skin in the game. I, I don't. I don't. I can't. I can't like rig it anyway. You know what yeah. I mean. The guess is the guess. So Loopy Larry, give your restaurant a shout out real quick. Loopy Larry's is the, the restaurant. Uh, like I said, it's a spinoff from uh, Seinfeld. Uh, my business partner was a huge Larry David fan, and I believe Loopy Larry's has what it takes to be in every big city. And we are really zoning in. And I'd love for you to come to Paducah. Um, like I said, I'm. I'm a huge fan, uh, love it, and we do soup, salads, and sandwiches, yep. uh, crazy good, crazy fast, and it's just a great spin on things, and uh, like I said, we're really dialing in, and our sales are really going going high, and I think yeah. this is the year for good good growth. It's very good, and this guy's awesome. Paducah, Kentucky, if you can hear me, if you're watching this right now, go into Loopy Larry's, tell them John Reap from Kirby Enthusiasm, friend of the real Larry David sent you in there and then maybe he'll give you a dollar off. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just yeah, I, I, want, I want your sauce, Reap. I, love, I want the hot sauce on that sandwich. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get you some south in your mouth, okay? We'll make Thank a sandwich you, or a soup with this. Oh, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Loopy Larry, got you on the phone. How much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? Four dollars and eighty-three cents. Lock them in. Four dollars and eighty-three cents. Now, Sebastian, do you mind running I us run into our mathematical wizard? So here's the deal for everyone that's uh, still on hold. I don't do math. Just because I'm a gold member and went and graduated from university doesn't mean I'm good at math. I'm a theater major. Mass communication which I'm doing right now. I'm using my degree and I'm communicating with you, the masses. Uh, so that being said, we give the check to a smart person and that is Alan Jackson. And he, what he does is crunch the numbers and he figures out who was actually closer to the amount of the check. And then he tells me, and then I let that person into the showroom. So right now, the only person who knows who won is in that control room right there. And his name is Alan Jackson, gold member from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It's so bad back there, man. Is what happened? It's bad. They what? threw me out. I'm so thirsty. It's hot. It's hot back there. there. No, 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 no. Oh. you can't open that yet. Oh, I can't. Oh, wait, wait, hang on a minute. Let me put this over here. Oh, I was thirsty. So what I'm holding here is a... Uh, Coca-Cola bottle from 1983. The NCAA champions in 1983, Wolfpack. I might drink this if NC State I wins. need a commitment. I, mean, I have to give it to you next week. Oh. <laughs> give me one more week. Okay. All right. All right, so Alan, please, do you have the results? 
Um, pretty close. Okay. Can you give me like 10 more seconds? Yes. In 10 seconds. We will know. The Alan Jackson. Because what we, I mean, you guys know the show's evolved over time. For one, for a little bit, we had the uh, the computer from Superman 3 in here. The one that Richard Pryor yeah. came up with in Superman 3. And it's the world's fastest, most powerful computer. Yeah. But then, over the time, one. we developed it into a chip, chip. that Alan has implanted. There it is. He's, he's in here now. Oh, hand delivery. Oh, this is special. Yeah. We never get a hand delivered. Well, nobody came back again. <laughs> <laughs> all right we miss you mark ball <laughs> okay all right so now now that the ellen jackson has crunched the numbers and i have the check in my hand i'll just ask him straight out the ellen jackson will you please let the winner of this one check from one episode of american dad Will you please let the winner into the showroom right at now? The winner is in the showroom. Okay. If you can hear my voice, talk to me. Who is this? Loopy Larry. Loopy Larry. Oh, more, st we get more stickers. It was in the cards. It was in the cards. Loopy Larry. Now listen, everybody. He's won the check fair and square. Check is his. I can give you this check, or you could go for an item in the mystery bag of merchandise. Now, what is in the mystery bag of merchandise? Merchandise from me, John Reap. Um, or you could go for the check. It is up to you, Loopy Larry. Would you like for me to mail you this check, or would you like an item for the mystery box of merchandise? I guess I'll take an item from the mer mystery merchandise if I can get an autograph sent as well. You got it, buddy. For those of you Thanks, at home that were playing the game, you want to know the result of the check. This is how much money he's passing up. Hmm. He didn't Big even gamble. he didn't even know the result. He did. He said, "I'm going for the mystery bag." He wanted it. Here's the money you said no to, Loopy Larry. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so everybody at home can see. 28 cents. <laughs> One quarter and three pennies. I get to keep. So thank you, Loopy Larry. What a deal Loopy Larry made. Normally, this is where we say, What are you going to do with all that cash? But instead, I'm going to send Loopy Larry an item from this mystery bag of merchandise. Now, let's get him something. I'm going to get him a CD and I'm going to get you this. Because I want you to put this on a sandwich or a soup. John Reap, South in Your Mouth barbecue sauce. Awesome. Woohoo. All right, buddy. So all you got to do now is go to carolinareaper.com, click the contact section, send me an email. I think you have my number, but give me an address to where I can send this, okay? Awesome. We'll do it. Thank you, buddy. All right, buddy. Go NC State. Go, go Wolfpack. Pack. All <laughs> right. And thank you all for calling in and, and holding and playing the game. I can't wait to read everybody's comments tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, they're about on About my ranking system and rules and regulations for rooting. It's, yeah, it's going to be great. Excited. Um, happy uh, National DIY Day. Let's do it yourself. So uh, props and respect to my wife, Jody. She does a lot of things herself. Hmm. I'm a YDI kind of guy. You know, you do it. <laughs> I got no skills. I've yeah. been doing this too. Long. I mean, yeah. It's also Sam Day of Action. Do you know what Sam Day of Action is? I didn't know. I didn't. Mm. Each year on the first Tuesday in April, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, Sam uh, Day of Action provides a day to focus awareness on sexual violence and prevention. So, yeah, be aware of it and don't do it. Thank hmm. you very much. It's also National Ferret Day. Wow, that's exciting. What are your thoughts on ferrets? Freaking hate ferrets, dude. I don't like them either. No, they're weird. They're sneaky. They they yeah. uh, they hide. They, look, they, they smell look like, weird. They're like moles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're weird. Uh, National Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwich Day. Well, your sandwich is over yeah. there. This one's I'm mine. Yeah. Would you like to have a bite of my mom's peanut yeah. butter and jelly sandwich? I'll have this one with you. Here you go. Take you this know, half. 
Or you it's need a big been head. so long since I've had a peanut, but you know, this is something that's died out. I'm glad that you're here and not Mark, because he would say, I can't eat that, it's too sweet. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah. Mm, all right. Mm -hmm. Happy National Reconciliation Day. Now that means mm. it's a time for you to repair a relationship that maybe has been broken or damaged over the years. Mm. So that being said, if any of my friends out there are watching this, that are upset with me. A Carolina fan friends? Right, uh, the level six. <laughs> level six fans. I'm sorry, I love you. You get a pass, I won't publicly shame you. Palm branch, I love you. give me the palm branch. Yeah, the olive branch. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm on Palm Sunday, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> All right, listen, that's it. Come see me in Denver. This weekend. That's Colorado, not North Carolina. Right, thank you. Denver, Colorado, the big one. I'll be at Comedy Works, April 4, 5, and 6. Then from there, April 26 through 27, Richmond, Virginia at the Funny Bone, short pump area. May 3, 4, and 5, Myrtle Beach at the Comedy Shop at the Wonders Theater. More dates can be found at carolinareaper.com. But remember, <clears throat> we're not just a live show for Facebook and YouTube. We're also a podcast for your ear holes. We're on all the platforms there. We could use your love. Write something nice. Go give us a good review. Give us a high ranking. Tell your friends about us. Uh, go to carolinareaper.com. Click on support. Throw some money in the tip jar if you want to help us out and keep the lights on here. Uh, but that's it for this week, folks. And I just got to say thank you all for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing and sharing don't forget sharing is caring don't just wad us up into a piece of paper and throw us into the waste basket <clears throat> why don't you fold us up into a paper airplane and pass it on to another friend <coughs> you know what i mean i'm choking on <laughs> this was crunchy peanut butter yeah <coughs> <laughs> but that's it for this week we'll see you back here next week till then i'm john reap saying Bicycle! Go pack! <laughs>